Hey people, how's it going? Hope you're all well. Another day in Berlin and uh, just wanted to show you around our uh, our neighbourhood in this one because like we always do, we're staying outside of the tourist areas and wanted to give you a slice of the experience of what it's like to do so. Now, we're staying in a pretty cool apartment. This is our setup currently. So we've got a little desk space which I've been using to vlog. The person very kindly provided some biscuits and some snacks and stuff, so really nice of them. Kyle's here and uh, he's got this pull out bed thingy. And Tam's over here representing Team McGrath. Boom, boom, look how cool that is, eh? Cool picture there as well and a decent, relatively comfy bed. Some cool lighting up there as well. Oh, bed's really comfy. The bed, yeah, the bed is quite comfy, isn't it? But the only thing that isn't good is if I put my head out here, look at this. Oh, hey guys. <laughs> um, this street that we're staying on is literally opposite a tram line. So that kept us awake all night. And we've got a little kitchenette area here, which is pretty cool. Got a hot plate, got all the essentials in there, got a little fridge. And then one thing I've noticed about low cost accommodation is that it's uh, always got really nice bathrooms. Look at this. How nice is that? Really, really nice bathroom. So, yeah, we, uh, we got a pretty, pretty nice little place to stay. It was uh, around 196 pound for the three nights. Was it two nights that we stayed? No, it's not two nights, two nights. Two nights, we're staying here for two nights, 196. That's the cheapest possible accommodation we could find. So this room that you've seen right now, or this little mini apartment, or a part hotel, I think it's called, mm. is the cheapest we could find in Berlin. It literally is the cheapest at this time that we could find. So what's the plan for today? Well, really, the primary goal is to show you a little bit of this area that we're staying in, so you can get a slice of what a non-tourist area looks like. And also to show you a little bit more of Berlin because we didn't even scratch the surface in our previous video. So I wanna show you both sides of the coin, that being the non-tourist area and then some of the more pretty historical architecture and the buildings. So join us in this video where we get out there and we have a look at the real Berlin, see what it's like, and then go out further and see what else is about. Let's go. So this is uh, how it's set up as well. So it's in different apartment numbers place we're staying. There's a shared toilet down there but we don't actually need that. We've got one with, with one. And there's a cool little waiting area. It's yeah, quite a pleasant place really. All right people so a little, uh, little tour of the area we're staying in. Well it's not far from where we're staying it's just literally around the corner. But the traffic was too loud so I'll bring you here instead but this is the typical street in the area that we're staying in. And uh, you can see you get a lot of these high rise type buildings, which uh, has a very Soviet type design. <laughs> so why are we documenting this side of Berlin? Well, it's important to remember that there are two sides to a city. And when we visit any city, we do try and show both sides of it, the good and the bad. But it depends on what you class as bad. Now personally, some may argue this is, but in my opinion, I quite like it. It's, uh, you know, it's got its own unique kind of charm in the architecture. And the architecture is quite varied as well, you must admit. You know, the different styles and whatnot. So, you know, like in all of our videos, we want to try and document as much of the city as we can with the time we have. Now, Berlin is such a big city that you wouldn't be able to cover it all. Even, in, even within a week, and we're trying to cram as much as we can into a few days. You know, so we're gonna do our best to show you what we can. But uh, equally, we don't wanna be one of those channels which just goes around showing all of the positives and gleaning over anything that's negative. Because uh, as I say, everywhere has its good and its bad. And it's important to document both. We were just debating little I think it's pronounced Lidl, but you guys say Lidl. 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 And that's the way we generally do say it in the UK, but I am certain it's Lidl. 
So if it is Lidl, do let me know, guys. But I always thought it was, uh, I always thought it was Lidl. But in the UK, we almost always say Lidl. And uh, yeah, I'll show you around one. I mean, we've got quite a few in the UK, but if you don't have one, then you'll know what to expect. Yeah. And these are the kind of prices. These are in euros, by the way. And that's what you can get. So chocolate music. For instance, croissants. Breakfast. Yep, definitely. So we need breakfast and we also need something for the tra uh, bus journey. So if you watched our previous video, we actually took a bus to get here and that bus took seven hours. So you definitely want to stock up on food for a seven hour journey. We've got a good, good uh, selection of coffee. And same thing here as well. Like, yeah, you've got a good uh, a good section here. I'm definitely going to get that pretzel once Tom comes here because that looks amazing. Berliner pretzel. It must be like a donut pretzel. And then there's your. Yeah, I'm going to definitely get a pretzel. And then we've got a normal pretzel, a Lagen pretzel, pretzel. I thought they're called pretzel. Mini Kaiser Kuchen, mini cheesecakes. Yeah, and you've got all sorts. So as I say, we've got, one of the, we've got these in the UK as well, and we love them. And I believe these are a German chain, so uh, yeah. This is what you would expect to find in the actual German version. Senf, which is mustard. Yeah. So we're going to get some snacks and then uh, get ourselves out and exploring. So Tammy and Kyle are off to uh, drop off the bags that we got from, I'm going to keep saying Lidl for now until someone corrects me. And uh, it cost us 40 euros for quite a lot of shopping actually. Like we've got quite a bit, including a few uh, Deutsche, Deutsche Weiss, Weiss, Weiss beer? Wheat beer? I thought it was white beer originally, because I thought Weiss was white. Turns out it's wheat beer. Uh, so, yeah. Just uh, going to continue looking around these areas and uh, exploring what uh, Berlin looks like outside of these typical tourist areas. So this is what we have so far. And uh, we've got a completely different vibe, to be honest, to what, uh, what I was seeing earlier. Um, you know, the city is very much uh, undergoing, undergoing some sort of construction. And... Uh, there's a lot, quite a lot of artwork around, which is pretty cool. It's quite a, quite a vibrant part of the city. Like you obviously have your graffiti, and you've got a lot of cool murals and stuff as well, dotted around, which adds a lot of colour to the city. I do like them when they're placed well and they look good. But uh, yeah, as you can see, like a lot of the buildings do still need quite a lot of renovation and work. But you know, obviously, quite a lot of places around do. Um, and yeah obviously when you get outside the tourist areas i tend to find that the people are a lot more authentic because within the tourist areas obviously genuinely generally speaking there's an agenda to try and sell you something or to try and get you to come into a store and so obviously people have to be nice to you whereas in these sections here people don't have to be nice to you so if they are it's coming from a genuine place uh, and that's why i tend to prefer these areas a bit more but as you can see, there are uh, a lot of work to add more house in and more buildings to Berlin. It's a rapidly growing city, so uh, quite a lot going on. And it's an ever-changing landscape, essentially. So let's keep pushing forward. So I've just strolled away into this little area here, and uh, this is what a typical smaller tucked away area looks like away from the roads and away from the hustle and bustle and you can see everyone's got these nice uh, balconies where they can spend a, a warm evening like it is today it's currently around 25 degrees it hit about 28 degrees earlier so it can get quite hot in Germany we're currently in spring we're in May currently so uh, yeah from May it can get quite warm in comparison to the UK currently it's about 18 degrees in the UK so when I shared the weather from uh, Germany, a lot of my friends were like, 
wow, we weren't expecting that because in the UK, we don't really know what German weather's like. You know, so when I was a kid, I always thought that Germany would be quite a cool country. Not cool as in it's not cool, it's a very cool country. Cool as in quite a cold country. No, it's certainly not. And you can see communal living spaces where everyone can put their bins away and again more redevelopment is going on over here and uh, construction is constantly ongoing to uh, to continue adding to the city but you still see the old charm in some of these buildings and obviously you see people wandering around and enjoying their daily life and it's very much a uh, stark contrast to the UK where life is a bit more fast paced so obviously in Berlin, in the centre of the city, things are quite fast. Everyone's rushing around, it seems, down in the metro or the U-Bahn, trying to get to work and trying to get around. But when you get to the outskirts, things slow down a bit, become quite a bit more relaxed and uh, the vibe genuinely changes, which is another reason why you should try and leave the tourist trails where you can. Because when you go to a city, you're really only experiencing a small part of its vibe if you stay in the tourist area and you're just experiencing the layers that are presented to you that everybody wants you to see actually when you cut beneath those layers and you go a bit further in there is quite a lot that is interesting now look at the architecture of these buildings again you can see they've got the high-rise uh, styles you know so expanding the city to cater for the growing population was very much a focus over these years you know if you uh, recall me telling you about the history of Berlin you know how quickly it grew from being these two towns to being quite a large bustling capital city which was itself also the capital of the Prussian Empire so lots of history here but again each city has more than one side and if you're only looking at one side of it then you're not really doing it a, a fair service now that being said there's a lot of stunning beauty around Berlin and we haven't documented it all so I'm very keen to show you that as well so we're gonna break back into the tourist trail now let's go and have a look at some of more of those side of things so you can see the difference in the architecture and the way of life over there as well I almost forgot in most of my videos I like to teach a few useful language phrases now if you've never watched our videos before one thing you will learn is that I like to try and learn the languages of the place that I go to. Now there's two reasons for that. The first reason is to show respect to the locals and uh, not rely on them speaking English all the time. I, <clears throat> I realise that English is a widely spoken language but I don't, think it's, uh, I don't think it's ideal to expect everyone to speak English all the time. Even if you know a few words and you can at least say a few words then the uh, conversation will continue into English. It's still good practice, I think, to attempt some of the words. So that's the first reason. And the second reason, I guess, and the primary reason why I started learning all these languages was uh, because we English have a really bad reputation, or the British, to be honest, have a really bad reputation for being lazy at learning languages. And uh, I'm kind of hoping to dispel that myth because it's not completely true. There's a lot of uh, English people that are quite good at languages. Now, I'm not one of them, but... Uh, I do like to learn languages and I'm fairly good at being able to recollect information. Now, given the fact on my channel, or on this channel, sorry, it's not just my channel, it's Tammy's as well, but given the fact on this channel, I'm able to recite and say quite a few words in different languages, it just goes to show that actually, you don't really need to be all that good at languages to be able to speak languages. You just need to be able to remember enough words. And I, I think that's a trick a lot of these uh, language YouTubers use. They just kind of remember key phrases and then regurgitate them. And I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that I know these languages fluently, because I don't. What I do is I learn roughly 16 useful travel phrases in every language, in every place that I go to, and I recite them to the point that they're practically in my head and I can't get them out. And then I speak them with people. And then if I really get stuck, then I always have the can you speak English? So with that in mind, let me give you a few useful German phrases. So, the first one is to say good morning or even good afternoon. Well, actually, let's start with good morning. So, good morning is guten Morgen. Good afternoon is guten Tag. 
good night is gute Nacht or gute Nacht sorry uh, good evening guten Abend uh, can I pay by card can ich mit Karte bezahlen um, do you speak English sprechen sprechen Sie English um, what else is there thank you danke thank you very much danke schön um, you're welcome bitte schön or bitte uh, have a nice day, Schönen Tag. It's actually einen Schönen Tag noch, but it's just easier to shorten it to Schönen Tag. Um, delicious is lecker. You could say das ist sehr lecker. That is very tasty. Or you could say das schmeckt gut. That tastes good. Um, what else is there? Um, if you want to comment on the prices, you could say das ist billig. That's cheap. Or the, or order <laughs> or uh, das ist sehr teuer that is very expensive <coughs> um, if you want to introduce yourself guten tag ich heiße bobby ich heiße ich it's quite important to get that right ich i c h ich ich heiße bobby uh, if you want to tell someone where you live uh, ich komme aus england if you want to tell someone uh, where you live ich wohne in peterborough if you want to tell someone your age in my case, ich bin 34 Jahre alt. I'm 34 years old. Um, and there's a few of us as well that are quite useful. Yes is ja, no is nein. Um, so there's so some basic, basic phrases you can throw around. Hello is just hello. You'd use hello in more of a formal situation or to someone who's a bit younger. You wouldn't really go to someone who's older and say hello unless you know them well would be considered quite informal but yeah there's a few words for you guys if you want to try out some German when you're next here guys so back into the uh, more touristy section it's not too bad it's not overly touristic at the moment I think they're all congregated over there somewhere but uh, let's show you what we've got over here look that's a bit of a right in it now that from what I know is a rotating restaurant up there so you can get an uh, elevator all the way up there and at the very top there's a rotating uh, restaurant so now we've shown you the uh, the less touristic side let's show you the beauty that Berlin has to offer as well because as I mentioned it is very much a city of contrast from what we've seen so far the contrast being that on the outskirts it's very much in need of a uh, renovation but like most places in the center is actually pretty incredible and of course that's not me uh, being rude about Berlin it's a lot of places on the planet including London including where we're from we're in the center things are good and if you're curious oh, it's, there you go if you're curious it's the Martin Luther Memorial Martin Luther published 95 of these against the abuse of indulgences the date is viewed I'll let you guys read that if you're curious just pause it and all that but um it's not me being rude about Berlin at all I really like this city but it's important that to know that there are two sides of a coin so it's not all the doom and gloom as i say because you've got this kind of stuff as well so what we're going to do now is continue pushing around see what we can find and see what beauty there is around berlin hello again it's only me so i've left bob and kyle over there Look what we have just stumbled upon. Look at that. This is Berlin Cathedral. It is absolutely gorgeous. Sorry about the state of my hair. As you can tell, it's windy. But yeah, look.
Look how gorgeous that door is. Look at the detail. Look at that. Absolutely amazing. Hi, so it's me again. And again, I've left Bob and Kyle to go do their thing. And I thought, you know, go for a walk. I've got the camera, so why not? And I've stumbled upon this. Let me flick the camera. Look how stunning. This building is. Look at that. You know, I wonder what it is. I ain't got a clue. But if you do know what it is or what have you, put it in the comments below. But look at that statue just there let me zoom in it zooms in but yeah look at that how cool is that statue you know so you know I wonder what like I said I wonder what building that is and what they use it for you have blown my mind. So, I better make my way back to Bob and Kyle because no doubt they'll probably be wondering where I've gone. You know where I've gone to but before I do that I just want to show you this and oh my goodness look at that Well, Berlin is very much the gift that keeps on giving. Look at this. This place is absolutely mental. I can't even begin to tell you what this looks like in real life. I'm just hoping the camera is doing this half decent justice. But um, yeah, we're gonna keep pushing through. Kyle earlier mentioned about an old place called Checkpoint Charlie. Um, so we're gonna go and check that out and uh, see what it's like our own eyes in the flesh but this entire street everywhere you look is just absolutely insane but look at that man like words are not really being able to do this true justice guys I can only imagine what this will be like in the winter as well when it's covered in snow and stuff look at that building over there mental Right, let me just quickly disturb this uh, here. This, don't worry, it's not a sponsored segment. We're not doing one of those things. Uh, Tammy just loves to show off her magnets. So we've brought a few magnets from a few of the different places we've been. So she really wants to show them off. So I'm gonna let her do that for you now. So if you're interested, there's one from Torun. Torun. Which was 20... Zvoti, Zvoti. Which is about four quid. And then I've got one from Big Dust, but Bid goshed. Bid goshed. <laughs> but look how cool this is. So I can either have it on this side, and if I get fed up with this side, I can then have it on this side. And this was 20 spotty, so it works out about what? Eight pounds? Four quid. Or oh, four quid. All right. Yeah. And then this one. Uh, it's She's very proud of this one, guys. Out of all of the magnets that we've got, this has got to be my favourite. So. As you know, we went to Berlin, and I've got a bit of the Berlin Wall. Look at that. This one, yeah, this, this, yeah, it's got to be my favourite. How much was it? 
Seven, seven euros fifty. Seven euros fifty. So there you go, guys. Just had to kind of cut in there just to show that bit. She insisted she wanted her Magnus in because I gave her a little nudge earlier. It was like, oh, our first video with no Magnus. She was like, no, you have to include the Magnus. It's our thing. So there's the Magnus. Please leave her a nice comment about the Magnus. She's very passionate about these Magnus. Our fridge is completely, please save the fridge, guys. It's looking very, very crazy. But anyway, let's get back to the video. Here we go, people. So this is Checkpoint Charlie right here. And uh, this would have been the American sector where the checkpoints would have been carried out. And you can see inside here some information if you're interested. And this is a rendition of the uh, little bags, which have now essentially become an Instagrammer's paradise, unfortunately. So, uh, yeah, not my not my favourite people, unfortunately. Look at that. Look, it's nothing more than a, a joke to these people. It really ain't. I hate it. Uh, yeah, this is the history. So you're leaving the American sector. Crazy. And that's it. That's a real history for you right there, guys. So, Checkpoint Charmy. Char Checkpoint Charmy? Checkpoint Charlie. Can't get my words out today. It's been a long day. Featuring a McDonald's as well, which is uh, quite fitting. So, uh, yeah. There we go. So, I've shown you both sides of Berlin. I've shown you the... Downside of showing you the historical side, and I've shown you, you know, well, a bit of everything really, and the beauty as well. So, just goes to show you that Berlin is an incredibly varied city with a lot of history, but unfortunately, we do get a lot of this. So, uh, if you're not a fan of the old Instagrammers, not respecting the history, there may be areas that you're not a big fan of, but regardless, it is what it is. I mean, some people view things differently. I tried to be as uh, respectful as I can of the history whilst I'm here um, but yeah posing for it in that way and just not really respecting what it meant to the people here it makes me a bit sad but regardless I guess it's been turned into a tourist attraction so I guess it's serving its purpose but anyway I just want to say thank you very much for watching today's video I hope you've enjoyed it I hope you've learned a bit more about Berlin today and I hope it's inspired you to come and visit and if you're from Berlin I've really enjoyed your city guys and thank you for joining me in the video too so I hope you have a great day and from us at Team McGrath, we shall catch you very soon. See you later, guys. Yeah.